Hi, and welcome to What The Heck, where today we'll be answering the question, what the heck is an RS Norlatch? Well, I'll tell you. So as is the case for many redstone mechanisms, it's easiest to first visualize it as a black box. This particular black box has two inputs and one output. The output is a constant on or off output, and the two inputs are both pulses, which means they turn on for an amount of time before then turning off, like a button. The one on the right is the reset button, and the one on the left is the set button, R and S, hence RS Norlatch. Now let's see how this thing actually works. So as you can see, the output right here, as represented by this redstone lamp, is currently off. And the way that we turn it on is we hit this set line. And as you can see, we send a pulse into it. And of course, this light turns on. Now, if we keep pushing this button, what you'll notice is that it actually stays on. And the only way for it to turn off is you have to go all the way over here to the reset line, hit this button, and then you can see it turns off. And then we can spam this reset button as many times as we'd like, and this thing stays off. And the only way to turn it back on is to come back over to the set line hit the button, and it turns on. Now, let's see what's on the inside of this thing. All right, so what we have in front of us is the most basic RS Norlatch. It consists of two torches, a couple blocks, and a few bits of redstone. Now, as you can see, it's on right now, and when we push this button, it will turn off and change states. Now notice, that this line is being powered by this redstone torch, which goes into this block, turning off this torch. Now that means that this block is permanently powered, meaning that when we power it again with this button, it doesn't change anything. Nothing actually changes. The only way to change the state of this system is to come over here to this button, push it, and as you can see, that changes the state of this torch which then changes the state of that torch. And as you can see now, we have the opposite issue where no matter how many times we push this button, it is not going to change the state of this block, not going to change the state of this torch, and not going to change the state of this redstone line over here. So we have to go back over here, hit this button, and there we go. Now, the pulse does have to be short enough such that it doesn't create a cycle, so you can see this line turns on, it stays on for as long as the button is pushed, this turns on, and then it locks into place. Now, in order to get an output out of it, I just chose this torch. Uh, you can honestly choose any one of these lines in order to get the output, but this particular torch is the one that I chose to get the output. You could have also taken an output out of this torch if you so pleased, but then this would have been the set line, and this would have been the reset line. So now that we've become familiar with the most basic form of the RS Norlatch, let's look at some other versions over here. So here we have a few variations of that design that we just looked at over there. This one, you can see, is very, very close to it. It's just shaved one block off because we are making use of target blocks, which redirect the redstone signal into them um, without having to actually run it into. That's a, that's a 1.16 feature for you. So this is a nice smaller way to do it if you are pressed for space, as you can see. Oops, there we go. Hit the set line, this turns on. Hit the reset line, that turns off. You can also achieve the exact same dimensions by using repeaters. Um, that is if you don't care about the delay that this adds, but in most cases, I think you'll be fine. So if you wanna use this one, go ahead and use that as well. And finally, back here, we have a bit of a funkier design. This one is one wide, as you can see. Um, it's more vertical than it is horizontal. And in this case, you have your set line here and you have your reset line there. And in order to take uh, an output out of this thing, you would take it out of this block, potentially. Um, I guess you can also take it off of this redstone line, but um, whatever way you decide to do it, I honestly don't recommend using this design because it's actually kind of bulky. So we'll look at some other more improved designs right now. So right here we have what I consider to be the most useful and the most prevalent design for an RS Norlatch. It consists of two droppers, as you can see, facing into each other like so, and two inputs, as you can see, our set and our reset. This one 
has a redstone torch or just some other junk item inside of it, and this one has nothing in it. And as you can imagine, you power this dropper, it moves the redstone torch into the other one, thus getting a reading out of this comparator and making that redstone light line up, light up, I mean. And now, no matter how many times we hit this set button again, you can see it won't change states because it's not powering this one and there is nothing in this dropper to move over. However, if we go ahead and power this dropper, it moves the torch back over here, turning off this lamp. And you can see that no matter how many times I push this button again, it is not going to change. So you can see it maintains the exact same functionality as that design over there, the first one that we looked at. Now, the downside with this is that it is a little bit noisy. As you can hear right now, yeah, if you false fire one of these, which will happen a lot if you're using one of these circuits, you'll actually hear a click, the click of an empty dropper. So if you don't mind that, then that's totally fine. But uh, yeah, just something to bear in mind. Now let's go on to another variation of this design, which I'd say is probably more commonly used, but don't quote me on that one. So here we have basically the exact same thing, except for it, instead of it being horizontal, it's stacked vertically. So you have a dropper facing up and then a dropper facing down. Oh, let's see if I can do this right. Eh, there we go. And so they're facing into each other like so. And you have your set down here. You can also have your set at the bottom if you want to. Just move this uh, comparator down one block. And you have your reset up here. Now something that you might find very interesting about where the reset button is, is it's diagonal to uh, the dropper and there's a piece of glass on top of it. Now this glass could also be a slab. This is just for safety purposes. Essentially, if it was down here instead, it might cause some unintended behaviors with this bottom dropper due to a thing called quasi-connectivity. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, don't worry, I'll be making a video on that soon. Um, however, I'd say for now, just take my word for it, you want glass on top of it, um, on top of this top one, if you're going to be doing this particular design, which we're going to be taking a look at right now. So in front of us right now is the famous RS Norlatch array. You may have heard people like Mumbo Jumbo say it multiple times, and you're probably like, what the heck is that? Well, it's, it's this. It's a bunch of RS Norlatch slices stacked next to each other, and they all have their own individual inputs and outputs. So if I go ahead and hit this set button, you can see that this one actually gets set. No matter how many times I push it, it doesn't change and it doesn't change any of the ones on the sides either. I can come over to this one, hit it, it gets set. This one gets set, as you can see, and it stays. And then you have a global reset line that runs over top of all of the droppers over here, and a button over here, or perhaps just a pulse generator, and you hit that and it resets everything. So in theory, all of these could be turned on and then you can boop, go ahead and reset them all. And it can be any combination of them and they would be reset by that button there. So there you go. There's your RS Norlatch array. It's an array of RS Norlatches. So let's move on to a very popular application of this concept right here. Did someone say button selector panel? I, I think I heard someone say button selector panel. Um, this, this is a button selector panel. So what you would do with a button selector panel is you would push a button on the panel and it would go ahead and select that output and only that output and reset everything else. So as you may imagine, behind the scenes what's going on is every time I push this button, it resets all of the outputs and then right after that, it sets its own output. And as you can see, that output is being represented both to the player right up front and also in the back there. So hit that button boom, hit that button, boom. I'm sure you can kind of see what's going on here. Um, if you want to know exactly how this works, this right here is also an RS Norlatch array, except for instead of it being vertical, it is horizontal. You can build them either way. Um, and if you want to know how to build it, there's your slice right there. You can take a screenshot and just take a look at what's going on here if you'd like. 
Um, and uh, just as a note, these outputs need to be inverted. So as you can see, all of them but one are on. Uh, that's no problem at all, just as long as you throw in a redstone torch and then you'll get the opposite effect. So there we go. There's that. Pretty cool. So now let's move on to perhaps a little bit more of a fancy version of a button selector panel. I don't know, if you like this more than the other one, you know, it's up to you. It really is up to personal preference, but this one has the buttons directly on the redstone lamps. Now you do get some weirdness going on when you push the button because when you push the button, it powers the lamp, which then powers the lamps on the sides of it like so. But you can see in the back, there's actually no weirdness going on. Boop, there you go, switches over cleanly. Boop, switches over nice and clean. So if you wanna know how to build this one, this one's a little bit more cumbersome, I gotta be honest, but it uses basically the exact same sort of uh, concept here. So there you go. If you want to build the slice of it, go ahead and take a screenshot right there. So there you have it. Hopefully now you're a little bit more familiar with what the heck an RS Norlatch is. If you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up in the comments below and I'd love to answer it. And if you have any other things in Redstone that you find confusing, go ahead and put those down there too and I might just do an episode on it. <laughs> Anyways, hope you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing for future content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!